Welcome, ghouls and ghosts. You, you get the thing. I know. I, I, <laughs> none of this is audible because I've been adjusting this. Hello and welcome to I Hate Your Movie. This is a movie podcast where me and my friend Rick... Hello. ...we inflict movies on each other. And this week I inflicted the highest pain onto Rick. There's a movie called Fateful Findings. And if you haven't heard of it, good for you. <laughs> it is a very indie movie, a very Z-list movie. Similar in the vein of Samurai Cop, if you listen to that episode. Super low budget. Like, if you think lower budget, think lower. Yeah, it's a movie called Faithful Findings, starring, edited by, directed by... Catered by. Catered by. <laughs> Boom mic was held by f- few places. Neil Breen, he's a, he's a, he's a genius of uh, filmmaking. <laughs> <laughs> Eric closes his eyes, doesn't want reality to hit him. So obviously this is like a funny bad movie. I made you watch it because it's a funny bad movie. Also, I was thinking like Samurai Cop. Everyone enjoys Samurai Cop. We can make a toddler watch Samurai Cop and they'll enjoy it. But this is more of a elevated bad movie. It's like you need to train up for it, you know. And I feel like maybe we jump too much ahead. We'll see. But that was my idea. I made you watch Samurai Cop. I made you watch Chopping Mall. So next is stupid one with the hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy the Talking Hedgehog, our favorite. So you know, even even off podcast we were training for this movie so rick what did you think of faithful findings well it's interesting in the intro to this you you said ah you do it with your friend rick because it's up for debate (laughs) (laughs) um no i mean obviously it's funny and we had a laugh watching it but oh god it sucked oh my god did it suck is that your one sentence review Uh, no my one sentence review is this film what you'd get if you took samurai cup and took out all of the action. Okay. Yeah. More modern cameras. Not as modern as they should be in 2013, <laughs> but still. <laughs> oh my god. So, one more curious about Daniel One Sentence Review is without looking, without cheating. Okay. Do you... looking at my notes. Yeah. Try yeah. try not to. Um, okay. Because uh, this is what I'm most curious about. Can you give a plot summary? Of what happens in this movie because I think not a lot of people have seen this movie you can't actually explain it and at the same time I think how you explain it will say a lot about you and how you how how we how we how philosophical uh, yeah <laughs> no I'm, I'm I'm curious because the other difference between this and Samurai Cup is Samurai Cup is very simple like you see what's happening is that but this one has a lot of like David Lynchian weirdness in it well, yeah, attempts, attempts. I was about to say, uh, like, I'm all for insulting David Lynch, but this is this is too far. Bullshit. That's how I feel. Total fucking bullshit. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm not. I just don't know how else to describe it. You know, it's attempts at surrealism. It's nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> well, can can you give me a plot summary? No, because it just it goes on forever. And there's so many different plots that don't make any sense or go anywhere or they start in the middle of what should be each plot story and ends <laughs> suddenly and without warning. Okay. Uh, go on. Oh my God. You, you can do, do it. Do you want to try and do all of the plots? Yeah, but like in a few sentences. That's not possible. <laughs> try. Uh, God. Okay, right. So this film is about a guy who falls in love as a child and the his love moves away later on in his life he gets run over by a car and starts getting headaches and goes to the hospital the doctor is his long lost love but he can't do anything because he's married and unconscious at the same time he has a friend who is not a very good husband and they are having marital problems he is also having marital problems because he's struggling to write a book. He's failing to write a book and because he, he keeps getting these headaches. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, he's not writing a book, he's actually a government hacker. 
<laughs> yeah, he actually hacks into governments and he's trying to expose corruption. At the same time, he then gets with his doctor slash childhood love. His wife kills herself. He doesn't give a shit. The angry, misogynistic husband gets shot in the head by the wife. So the friend gets shot. All of this is happening. The daughter doesn't really care because they've got a daughter which never really comes up or goes anywhere except for the fact that she inexplicably wants to fuck <laughs> Neil Breen. Yeah, just Google Neil Breen and, uh, <laughs> you know, you know what we mean. And then the government gets on to Neil Breen, kidnaps the childhood love. He turns out he has special powers that he can walk through doors, saves her, and exposes the government. I think that was very good. Very yeah. good. Very good effort. Yeah. Thank you. Did I miss anything? You missed that the childhood friend ages slower. <laughs> <laughs> so 20 times slower. I've looked it up. It's in the fun facts. I can give you the exact age difference between the two. Go and have a guess what the age difference is. So, like I said a second ago, I don't know how much of what I just said is going to stay in. All of it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> But there's like a flashback scene at the start and there's a girl kid, boy kid, and they're about a year or two age difference. Yeah. And then they meet again as adults and they're supposed to be the same age. Mm -hmm. And they're very clearly not. <laughs> Neil Breen is this old man. Yeah. And guess how much younger Jennifer Autry is than Neil Breen. I read this. Sorry. What was it? 39? 32. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he aged 50 years, uh, <laughs> the lady aged 10. So this kind of gives you an idea what kind of movie we're talking about. Also, Neil Breen, he's just the best. It's a piece of shit. No, he's the best. He's a piece of shit. He's the best hacker. Oh, okay, yeah. That's what I mean, in, okay. in this movie. You yeah. mean his character? His, What's character? his character's name? Uh, I genuinely don't know. Dylan. Oh my Dylan, god! It is Dylan. I couldn't. Yes. I can't believe I remember this. I tell you how you remember it. Yeah. His name's Dylan because when he gets hit by the car, his wife's on the phone, and she's like, "Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, 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 Dylan. Dylan. Are you there, Dylan? Dylan, 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 the actress thought that those are just variations that he might keep, but no, he kept it all of it <laughs> in editing. Also, by the way, for the flashback scene, it was not clear that they were friends. I thought they were brother and sister, and I got very confused when one of them was moving away because the kid's parents aren't there, mm -hmm. and it genuinely looked like they were just abandoning their child. <laughs> We've got our favourite, and we're off. <laughs> My favourite bit in that scene is that we see them packing... And then, where's Dylan? She looks in the distance, and where's Dylan? And she doesn't, like, turn away or anything. She's just out of the frame, he and he just in. walks in. <laughs> wow, your eyesight is really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Maybe they live in Silent Hill. There's just, like, fog everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> By the way, if you're enjoying this episode, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and we also have a Patreon where for one pound or one dollar a month, you can listen to bonus episodes that we do and also recommend us movies and join a great community of people. Patreon.com slash I Hate Your Movie. It's also in the description box. Check it out. Thank you very much. What happens? I just said what happens. Yeah, well, yeah. In great detail. That's true. I said what happens in the amount of detail that the film gives it. Yeah, an admission mm -hmm. for you because I haven't seen this movie fully before. Okay. And you called me out on that. That is fine. Yeah. Because that works in my favor. How so? You find out. Okay. Well, I have seen everything we've discussed so far. Yep. And if it wasn't a funny bad movie, I wouldn't do that. I've seen most of this film through clips and shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just didn't know what the order is and stuff. You shouldn't watch funny bad films on your own. Because they'd be miserable. You should watch it with friends and make fun of it. And, you know, you're my friend. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll um, see what your next recommendation is. <laughs> so, like, you know, I'm keeping a few bad movies just for you. <laughs> I've seen some of his movies all the way through. Double Down. 
Isn't this a remake of Double Down? Every new Neil Breen movie is a remake of an older Neil Breen movie because he's always the world's best hacker. He always has 15 different laptops. <laughs> <laughs> he's always the best. His women always like moon at the side of him. But never fuck him because he can't afford that. Yeah. He can't afford to pay the actresses, well enough. Yeah, oh my god. stoop that low. So many uncomfortable make-out scenes. You can just see the actress just kind of trying, but uh, repulsed by him. <laughs> Speaking of acting, we had a disagreement as well. Okay. Because I thought that Neil Breen stands out as the worst actor in this. And you said that everyone is pretty much the same. Yeah. I feel like they tried a little bit, and he doesn't. He comes from the DiCaprio school of acting, which he thinks that shouting is intensity and he doesn't put any other effort in it the only effort he puts in it is shouting i can't wait any longer okay he always looks miserable he always looks like he's not really there who dicaprio or neil Brain? <laughs> <laughs> both <laughs> they're pretty much the same in terms of the romantic age difference as well what else is similar <laughs> what else is similar between dicaprio and neil Breen? Yeah. DiCaprio always gets snubbed at the Oscars, like Neil Breen does. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's significantly worse than anyone else. Even though all of them really bad, I feel like they put some effort in it. Let's talk about the real star of this movie. Sony dead laptops. <laughs> First of all, I want to talk about the scene where he discharges himself from hospital. And he gets in the shower. Oh, yeah. And it's like, oh, is your head still bleeding? <laughs> and it's just pouring blood. Oh, my God. You need to go back a little bit for that one. Because that is like the chain of nonsense. <laughs> that, that whole hospital thing. Because he has like a head trauma. And he has like a giant cast on his face, including his nose and mouth. Yep. But they put oxygen on him. <laughs> <laughs> Over the mask. Over the mask. That's one. Second one, he goes into the shower with full mask on, yep. drenched, and then blood is pouring down. <laughs> and then his wife joins him and he, they just... They have a little dance. They, they have, have a little a dance. Slow dance in the shower while his head's pouring with blood. Great. I like that they, even in the hospital, not just the oxygen, they have that little nose thing as well. Yep. You know, attached to nothing. <laughs> okay. So yeah, he gets these headaches and... How would you describe this clumsy universe? Everyone's a bit too clumsy. Every... <laughs> this is an alternate universe where everyone's this like... This is a film made for cats. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good, yeah. yeah. Things are just constantly being pushed off of tables. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> if you hate laptops, books, just things on tables, you know, this is the movie for you. <laughs> I was thinking, like, why is he doing that? It's really hard to get into his mind. But that's the fascinating thing about this movie. It's like, what is he thinking? He gets a headache and he throws his laptops around. There's all these very over and somehow undirected scenes of him destroying property. Keeps like collapsing and yeah. pushing things off. The yeah, very head. dramatically. And then he throws books. I think he was thinking that it adds production value to his film. That he has all these laptops that keeps destroying them. Okay. That's the best expansion because otherwise it's stupid. Like he's a novelist. He has three to four laptops depending on when. At any given time. At any given time. Anywhere with him. He should have wear like a little circular table. <laughs> and then it just like swings it around. And it, like all of them are clearly dead. Including the one he works on. <laughs> it's like it's the typing away and it's black. The no more books he gets a call from his publisher. He harassing him to write another book because he's such an amazing novelist. Don't call here anymore. No more damn books. No more books. He seems to have only written one book. Yeah, he did, yeah. But he's such an amazing novelist, he has to... You think if you were writing yourself as an amazing novelist, you'd have had, like, seven or eight good books? No, because he was too busy to hack into the government <laughs> it, he declines this offer multiple times there's multiple scenes where he gets like yeah everyone's like oh please write another book but he has a publisher and it, a deadline yeah the publishers giving him yeah even though he's got a publisher and a deadline he hasn't got a contract with them <laughs> yeah. apparently yeah so he decides 
I just don't understand like the method of thought for this thing because if he's this super hacker why has he signed up to a book deal and then not done the book deal and decided to just string them along for a while it's just a dick <laughs> yeah because his nail brain is the best he can do anything but, but he, he had an accident so he can only hack the government uh, he, okay. he can't write another novel you know he's ill how many takes do you think no more books took i've read that too yeah sorry i read the same i am today <laughs> I, I don't remember if it was 30 something 29 29 in one take neil breen accidentally cracked a laptop screen while throwing a book and how he didn't break more laptops <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think it takes a special amount of skill not to break that many laptops. I'm I'm dying in curiosity to see what he thought was wrong in those other scenes <laughs> <laughs> that he improved upon on yeah. the 29th take. Yeah, like what? I had so much more emotion in this one. <laughs> no more books. No more books. I did miss a subplot actually. Ooh. Ah, uh, I'm in my overview. I missed a subplot where his wife has a pill addiction. Oh, yeah. I think through him, which was interesting, kind of. But was it? It, yeah. <laughs> well, it was a venue that could have been interesting. Barely explored to the point of I'm not even sure it happened. <laughs> <laughs> because he goes to this psychotherapist. And I think what he tried to do is that he was saying that he only goes to the psychotherapist for the pills for the wife. Okay. I think that was the idea. He decided he didn't want to take him anymore. So. He flushed down the toilet and the wife tries to claw it out of the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> the wonderful scene. I'm sure that will go to this actress's uh, portfolio. <laughs> Fishing things out of a toilet <laughs> Yeah. Neil Breen. Yeah. And this is how quality this movie is. We weren't sure if she's going to eat it or not. <laughs> it kept saying psychotherapist on the door. Yeah. Someone said it once and I've since read it as Psycho the Rapist. Psycho the Rapist. <laughs> Uh, it looked, he looked like kind of a rapist, <laughs> to be fair. So let's let's set this psychotherapist scene up, which is all the scenes are the same, that he quits on his psychotherapist. Yeah. Three of these scenes where it's the same thing. I don't thing. need you. I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. The pills make me dizzy. I can work on myself. I know I have problems. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the character is written perfectly. He can cannot do wrong. And he goes into this conference room, <laughs> yeah. giant conference Office room. conference room. Which, again, if this was on purpose, almost like a stroke of genius, I can imagine this scene done a bit better and the setting would be funny because it's a giant conference room with, like, a very long table and they both uh, sit at the end of each one. And, like, I can imagine that in, like, a Wes Anderson film, kind of trying to show how, like my counselor is not in touch with me. He's like, oh, so far away and it's so cold. But I think he's just, that's the room he could get. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like this incredibly old dude who looks like not even an actor. It's like someone's grandpa. I mean, they are both psychotherapists. Mm -hmm. The boardroom guy and the witch in the closet. The witch in the closet, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Had the same surname in the credits. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they're like husband and wife. Yeah, I think so. Oh, my God. Yeah, so the other psychotherapist, who is like more esoteric, I guess. The more holistic, I would say. But yeah, she was like spooky witch. And <laughs> it, this movie kind of represents what men get in the same job as women get. I guess <laughs> <laughs> she, he gets a giant consultation room. With like 15 seats and a giant table. She gets the janitor's closet. She's in the corner of a room. Somewhere. Yeah, with fold out chairs. <laughs> and both of them looked like too old to be doing anything. Especially her. She was like, I would put her in like hospice care. Fuck me. <laughs> she was so old. She had like bloodshot eyes. She could barely speak. Do you reckon they're Neil Breen's parents? Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know he does get like, not famous, obviously, and not greatly talented enough but, but like he gets like working actors i know that like you know people are in commercials and stuff okay he's 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 a giant asshole but there's one thing we know about him is that he pays people well and yeah he's like tries to keep like a professional production with like catering and shit so you know there's that okay yeah he's uh he used to be an architect and he has loads of money not enough to make a good movie <laughs> 
be good if he wasn't involved. Yeah, yeah. If he like wrote this shitty script and handed it to the real writer <laughs> and then the real filmmaker, they could make something out of it. What I will give this this film some credit for, yeah, that it kind of shows this portrayal of couples. She's got a pill addiction, but he's trying to work through it. And same with the other shitty couple. You know, mm-hmm. he's a dickhead. She's, you know, not particularly into anything. Mm-hmm. But they have good days and bad days, you know? Do they? Do they have good days? Yeah. They have days, like, where, like, they're sitting on the couch together, talking about, like, normal things, or they'll... When? Or they're talking... Or they go... That was it. They go to, like, a barbecue, so they're having these problems. But even the barbecues at the end is, like, a drama thing. A little bit. But... Before that, when they have, like, the dinner party, you know? Like, she's got a pill addiction, he's got headaches and he's not facing the problems, the dickhead's drinking too much and the wife is ignoring the kid, but they all kind of, like, sit around and they have a nice meal together (laughs) and, you know, like I say, it shows that they kind of... It's not all kind of negative all the time, even if they are having problems. I did feel like that was the only time, and I think that was supposed to be an outtake in a real movie. (laughs) <laughs> because I think that was the only time Neil Breen was smiling when they were like handing out food and they were like chit chatting. He's like, let's film us chit chat. And he kind of maybe forgot about the cameras for a minute. And it was like genuine smiling, you know? Probably because he made the food. <laughs> yeah. He ordered the KFC. No, it was nonsensical. The, the, all the t- relationship and stuff. It was almost like relationship drama generator. <laughs> And it doesn't have to connect, and it doesn't have to make sense, but <laughs> it is there. That's what took me on to the relationship thing, because there is a scene where they're having problems, but they go to have, like, sex in his office, because they start working things out. Oh, yeah. And they just, like, throw a book on the floor, then yeah. throw a laptop on the floor, then throw another laptop on the floor, <laughs> then throw a book on the floor, <laughs> then throw another book on the floor, then throw another laptop on the floor. It's all production value. <laughs> you can imagine what he was thinking this scene would be like yeah oh they have a hot passionate sex moment and it's just awkward as fuck (laughs) and there's no chemistry or nothing or acting or anything they tear into each other's clothes yeah and it doesn't quite work yeah again in the script it was like she tears his shirt off completely and throws it on the ground in reality like she's like really clearly struggling to tear his shirt just a little bit it's like (laughs) okay that'll do (laughs) moving on what did you think about the teenage daughter lusting after Neil Breen? For it's disgusting. You know what? I've seen worse movies where that would turn into, no, she really is in love with me. So I kind of want to give credit a little bit. It was gross. I think if you write that into your own film about you, that you can't really take credit for that. <sighs> but at least he wrote himself in a way where I was like, no, let's not do this. Let's let's be adults here. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So he turns away the girl, you know, because he's a he's a stand up guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't yeah, but again, I don't think you can write the teenager skinny dipping in the pool. Yeah. And then because even though the character turns out to be a good guy, the fact that he's written that scene in proves yeah. that he's not. I'm talking about the smallest of credit here. Right? I'm, I'm searching for positives. You know, right? Some sort of self-awareness about himself. Like a 1%. So he has a magical cube. He does have a magical cube. <laughs> and it's a magical day, obviously. It's really, really brought up. <laughs> and really relevant to the story. Yeah. So let, let's go back a little bit just to explain. So when they were kids, they found the mushroom. Yep. Which they would look at for like a minute straight. Yep. And the mushroom would disappear. As long as it takes for the VFX to (laughs) to turn for a mushroom into a pot. As long as the kids could like keep up the same posture. Yeah. So (laughs) they they, they can cut to a a version of the scene where the mushroom isn't there. Slowly fading away. And uh, there's a box where the mushroom was. And in the box there's a black cube. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, let's take this. And she she's against taking the cube away, so she puts some of her beads into the box. Well, no, that's not clear either, because they're just rocks on the ground. It looks Are like they? just rocks on the, Yeah, because she picks them up, and she's like, I'm going to make a bracelet out of these. Oh. And then she grabs another load from the ground and puts them in the box. Mm-hmm. 
and the, she makes the bracelet. Was there, was there just a, like an accidental different magical item next to the <laughs> magical <laughs> item? Fuck those. She rides down. It's a magical day because they found the magic cube. Mm-hmm. The cube, by the way, gives him visions. Right, so that's why... another subplot I missed. That, that's why I want to ask you, so because the movie starts with this cube, obviously it has like a giant significance in the story, right? It's like the blue cube in Mulholland Drive and the blue key. It's like, yeah. obviously just as important, right? I guess that was the intention. <laughs> it gives him uh, Kitty Pride powers. He can walk through walls, but he knows that even though he hasn't tried them before. No, he has tried it before. I think the the idea is because you, throughout the entire film, you keep seeing these feet. <laughs> yeah, I think at the beginning, so he gets the accident, and then the crowd is very badly edited. It's like hard to describe how bad it is. <laughs> but basically, there's this crowd that gathers, and you only mostly see the feet. Yeah, I think that was meant to communicate, like, oh, everyone looks and no one helps. Mm-hmm. Poor Neil Breen. I figured it might be some kind of like, if we show people's faces, we have to pay them more. <laughs> that might be too, as well. <laughs> Just like members of the crew. Come stand over here. Stand there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The camera is in drawing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Throughout the film, you see these like suited legs and shoes walking oh, yeah. around. And they keep appearing. The spooky ghost. The yeah. spooky cube ghost. The, maybe the spooky ghost was him all along. That's what I was thinking. I thought that, that at some point they would pen up and it would be him mm-hmm. but no but I think, think that's him sneaking off in the night to uh hack into government offices so what uh, visually what happens in this movie and it's very frustrating to explain because it is frustrating to watch because you don't know what's going on but while neil breen sleeps there's a spooky ghost that comes in like a little fart uh effect. yes i forgot about the <laughs> the the fog the fart, fart effect. Fart effect. The same fart effect, no matter where they are, what they're doing, it's the same plug-in effect. And there's a music piece that doesn't fade out, it just stops. That's my favorite. Just... That's it. That comes with the fart in the wind. And then there's a, we see legs of a suited guy just walking around. But I think the implication was that the suited guy wants the cube back. Right. He's the spooky ghost with the spooky cube. Uh, that's his cube or something. I think it was some sort of twist where he turns out to be a good ghost. Right. I think that was it because at the end nothing happens. So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you just try to make sense out of absolute nonsense. <laughs> yeah. This is what I think you see when you see a David Lynch film. Yes. <laughs> but at least those are well made, you know. Sure. Like, I mean, you know, like technically, there's the car chase. More, more better than this. Like, come on. Okay. There's that car chase in the beginning of Mohan Drive that you liked. They, Neil Breen would never film that. Production. Oh, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. It's yeah, like, okay. uh, you know. It was a real crash. Yeah. actually crashed two cars together. Yeah. That was quite good. It's not just two JPEGs. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's inserted a GIF of two cars crashing. Yeah. I would like to talk about Neil Breen's treatment of his wife. Okay. And her eventual death. By suicide. Yeah, this this movie is more feminist than poor things. What? <laughs> in terms of, it displays how disposable women are in relationship. Fucking hell, <laughs> dude's got no feelings. Yeah, I know. Like, so, oh my god. So his wife's got a pill addiction, and he doesn't really do much about it. He's more like, oh, it hurts me to see you like this. He shouts at her. That's the funny thing. Is like it doesn't come from compassion. It's more like. I hate seeing you like this. I hate seeing you like this. Change now. Change now. He's really aggressive about it. In the meantime, he starts to kind of fall back in love with the childhood love Dr. Lady. And he must have sat there with the script and gone, Oh, God, I want this romance between me and the Dr. Lady, but the character's got a wife. Oh, what can I do about that? Oh, she'll just kill herself. uh, And then we'll carry on. Yeah. She'll just turn off the bed and we never have to see her again. Yeah. Spill a drink in the meantime. (laughs) Spill a drink. Everyone spills everything in this movie. That's the main fun in this movie is just watching people trying very hard to act like they don't want to spill something. (laughs) (laughs) It was tense. When he passed out on on top of the laptop with the coffee. That's the best one. That's the best Uh, one. It's so long. And then you're like, oh my God, it's going to spill this coffee. It's going to spill this coffee. And it doesn't. And then it stops for a bit, 
and it thrills her. <laughs> it has some perfect comedy timing, you know. <laughs> Accidental. Accidental, obviously. <laughs> he spills his spinach dinner as well. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> that's a funny scene in itself, where it's like he sits at his famous desk with the fifteen laptops and the five hundred books. It looks the same. His new wife. His new wife. And he's, she's just sitting there while he's working and laughing at her, <laughs> laughing together. Like the scene cuts in and they're like, ha 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 ha. And they're like that. And he eats just spinach from a plate. <laughs> just spinach. And like, what is this scene? Like, what is she doing there? <laughs> like in real life. She's just w- watching him work. It's nonsense. And then, yeah, the second most tense moment in this film is when. Neil Breen just puts a plate of spinach on some paper yeah. in a folder. It's the folders and they're in like a, a thing that stands them yeah. up and he puts a, like a heavy plate on top of it. <laughs> and surprise, surprise, it falls off. I've got a quote from you that I wrote down. Oh. Yeah. Wonderful. It's when it's another magical day. Yeah. And the Neil Breen and his new wife go into the back into the woods together. Yeah. And they get topless for some reason. Do you remember what you said? No. My quote from you is, I don't like his nipple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just like, yeah, he's uh, he's got a nice ass. It's surprisingly so. Surprisingly so. I wondered if it was like a double. <laughs> no, because he's... It looked youthful. He, he looks better than his face. And his <laughs> nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it just, just works out the bottom of his body somehow. I don't think it was double because, first of all, that's money. Second of all, you can see his very unfortunate balding, and that's hard to replicate, especially on his budget. He's got very weird hair. Okay. Where he's like... I thought you meant on his ass. <laughs> it's like, is, that, is that a thing that happens as you get older, you get a bald ass? <laughs> no, it's opposite. You get a hairy ass. Yeah, yeah. tell me about it. <laughs> because, like, yeah, he has a very... Let's just Google him. He's, he's He looks very weird. He almost looks like... The Doctor from Poor Things. I was thinking the... Not just the face. I'm, Quas- I'm, Quasimodo I'm, from uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. I'm talking about his hair, because that in itself is like a something. The adaptation. Okay, yeah. It's like, there's a very thin line of hair, but under his balding. It's really weird. It's weird to look at. So yeah, so I just don't like his nipple. I don't like his <laughs> nipple hanging out. It's right in focus, it's right in my face center screen yeah they were like making out it's just uncomfortable yeah it's it's uncomfortable to think like oh someone's getting paid for this it's like weird and stuff but yeah and so i want to look away from that and the only thing i can look away to is his nipple <laughs> so <laughs> i was like i don't want to look at his nipple the friend who has the fourth failing marriage okay that lady you the see her lady. Bre- you see her obviously fake breasts <laughs> <laughs> that's why i remember it no not fully in nude Fine, you don't see skin, you see mostly plastic. You don't see any of it? <laughs> when? I can't remember the I don't think you do. The only thing you do see is she wears very tight tops, and it's clearly a very yeah. cold room. <laughs> he has not paid for air conditioning. Well, it's weird, because I hear all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> Pills help. The, we could do a whole podcast and the sound of this film. And sometimes they talk and they're like completely indistinguishable of what the fuck they're saying. Because <laughs> all you hear in the background is... Brrr. But yeah, even I mean, there wasn't much nudity, but even what there was was pretty tasteless. Yeah, mostly because Neil Breen and he looks ugly. I can body shame him. He's a 65-year-old man. He can take it. <laughs> but he said his ass is nice. Yeah, there you go. Put that on your face instead. <laughs> Let's talk about the end of this film. Oh, the the sharp turn this movie takes is like one of my favorite things ever in any movie whatsoever. <laughs> because he he drops like clues like oh, okay he's he's hacking the government or whatever. Yeah. But I don't think you see this coming. So the guy gets killed and the wife frames it as a suicide. Even though the teenage daughter is there, that was also weird. The wife says oh it was an accident or whatever. And then he tells the daughter to go phone the police without telling her, oh, please do not mention that I shot <laughs> I shot the bullet. You know what I mean? I think it's implied. It, uh, I would make sure that, <laughs> that she says it's a suicide that happened, you know? 
so obviously not a suicide. <laughs> like, nobody... But she put the gun in his hand. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and put the bullet there as well. No need for fingerprints. No, no need for fingerprints, ballistics. Yeah, asking uh, anyone any questions. Powder residue. The questions of how you can shoot yourself square yeah. in the forehead from the front. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, Neil Breen comes in and he's like, Jim, Jim. Oh, I'm, wait, I'm putting too much emotion into this. Jim, Jim. Oh my God, Jim. How could you commit suicide? How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? How could you have committed suicide? And he says it a few more times. Yeah. And yeah, I, I do think this and the famous troll to know is like one of the most famous bad acting moments of all time. Let's get back to the end of the Yeah. Film. Let's get back to the glorious press conference to the world. Before that. Oh my God. The doctor lady gets kidnapped. Oh yeah. Oh. By. A teenager. Yeah, by some teenager kid. And then he gives this weird like monologue down the phone. It, I guess in his head it was like a taken type. I don't know who you are, but I'll find you. And I'm going to kill you. But he, he's leaving a voicemail <laughs> to his wife. <laughs> and then he finds them on a movie set. I guess it's, it is clearly like a trailer. I don't a... think it was a movie, so I think it was like an empty parking lot and they hired a, a uh, trailer. A trailer. I yeah. thought it was, you saw um, the big studio hangar buildings in the background. I refuse to believe that this movie is made anywhere near where they make movies. <laughs> 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 they made this on an alien planet. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and this is where you find out he has magical powers. Yeah. Because he stands, he knocks everyone out. He stands by the door, and then he fades away, and he fades into the cabin. Yeah. And he goes to, <laughs> he goes to his <laughs> wife, his new wife, yeah. and he takes off the blindfold and the gag. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm here to save you, but we're going to get out of this room, but I'm not going to show you how, so I've got to put the blindfold on. And you're like, okay... Maybe it's like a mystery men situation where if people are looking at him, he can't become invisible, whatever. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, I'm going to put the gag back on you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> and then they escape because they fade through the door. What well, a glorious movie. My note at this point was, I'm getting angry now. Really? Yeah. At this movie? Yep. Or me? Just both. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about some, the press conference. So, as you do... You hack the government. Yep. Whatever government. And big corporations. And big corporations. Don't forget those. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've done this, you obviously you call a world's press conference where all the world leaders slash company CEOs are standing by <laughs> to watch your speech. And he says that he uncovered government secrets. Yep. And they just believe him. <laughs> so that's the scary part in this movie right because it's all very vague mm -hmm. he could come this from any angle right left center whatever he uncovered the corruption whatever corruption that is while he's giving this speech there's a jpeg uh, crosshairs on him <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> someone's trying to shoot him and something happens and the shooter gets shot yeah, and it never shows how. It never shows how. I think what happened is that his magical powers made this bullet boomerang <laughs> or reflect, and that's how he gets shot. But it could be anything, really. It's up for your interpretation. The darkest thing about this is that the people running these governments and corporation, corporations, <laughs> but like, this he film has made me stupid. He should have wrote that line, corporations. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like he's tired. <laughs> governments and corporations... They all kill themselves. None yeah. of them go to jail. Yeah. Here's a quiz for you. Yeah. See if you can cover all the people that die. Yeah. Now, bear in mind, there's five people standing at the press conference. Yeah. Six people die. Never explains why. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I will. I just have to say that there's this world conference and he says, I uncovered the corruption and the, and the bad things and we must fight. And he never says what was the corruption or... Yeah. It all sounds very vague. It's kind of like grandstanding. Yeah. And we were sitting there saying like, okay, we know this already. 
Like, yeah. he uncovered that the corporations are bad. Ooh. Yeah, the corporations are corrupt. Yeah, Duh. we know that. Politicians are corrupt, we knew that. Yeah, how was it? He says something like, they put profit before people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you live in this world? <laughs> no, because he's an alien. So, <laughs> so obviously, hearing these bad news, yeah. these very specific criminal activities, Yeah. All the world leaders kill themselves. So, I think the first one is guy with the mustache. If I go out of the order, I might do. Yeah. But I remember the first guy is the first guy with the mustache who goes like, I am the CEO of bank. <laughs> <laughs> I resigned today as president of the bank. What bank? Yeah, just the bank. I acknowledge I've done bad things. And he just slowly puts in frame. He's about yeah. to show himself. Yes. So that's one. That's one. Uh, it's gonna be out of order from now on. Okay. There's the kind of Indian-looking lady. Okay. She kills herself with the, you know, like put, closing the garage. Yep. On the in the car, running the car. There's one guy who hangs himself. Yep. There's one guy who takes the pills. Yep. And I even tell you the sixth random guy who wasn't there. You you're at four so far. Oh shit. Okay. But I tell you that the guy who wasn't there in the crowd to begin with. Is the guy who slit his arms yes. in the bathtub. Yeah. yeah. You see, I'm an expert. Ooh, there's one more. I'll give you a clue. Yeah. We made a joke about the prop. Was there another gun one? Yeah, it yeah. was another gun one. With the same gun. Because I'm like, <laughs> wait, Neil Breen doesn't have the creativity to come up with another way to suicide <laughs> yourself. So, like, it must be another gun one. Yeah, the gun looks exactly the same. Uh, even, like, the wife Yeah. The, that kills the husband is the same gun. Wonderful scene. Wonderful Oscar scene. It's a lot scary at all, you know. I would elect Neil Breen based on this. Oh, God. <laughs> Governments are bad. Corporations are bad. Corruption. Corruption is bad. What does he actually believe? Oh, it could be anything. That things should be not corrupt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever that means. And he doesn't like the bank or the, the insurance company. Yeah. Especially as his ex-wife and his dead friend's widow both work for the <laughs> bank yeah. as well. I genuinely think there's a mistake in the script. Do you think? I, I'm so sure because there's... Yeah, he's just, oh, quickly. Oh, uh, she works at somewhere at bank. And then like five scenes later, oh, she works somewhere at bank. <laughs> I genuinely think that was a mistake. There's a mistake in this film. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Every now and again, you try and give him credit and then you realize, no. No. You know, you're trying to give him credit of like, oh, these people work for the bank, but it's not their fault because the, the, the bank's corrupt. Yeah. So they shouldn't have to suffer. But it's none of that. It's like you say, he's just gone. They work for I don't know, bank. Yeah. Yeah. It's placeholder dialogue actually filmed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love, I love, I love this ending. It's so hilarious. It's so funny. It's so nonsensical and vague. <laughs> and yeah, it's stupid. It's very funny. Cool. <laughs> you didn't enjoy it as much oh it was funny to watch but like, looking back on it it's just shit oh. it was funny to sit there it was a good laugh to, yeah. to go through it we had a good time yeah yeah, yeah. that's how you should watch this movie it's like with a friend cracking jokes <laughs> oh we missed out the visions yeah the, the bin bag visions <laughs> it's, I think the idea is supposed to be inside the cube oh yeah it like, like a void yeah yeah He's in a void and he's naked and there's visions. And it's, yeah, nonsensical. Trying to be surrealist, but I don't know. Surrealism, even though you and I don't agree with that, like where, where David Lynch makes surrealism, that's like based on something. He has ideas that he wants to put on screen. I think Neil Breen just literally goes, okay, what's the weird thing I can do? Okay. And he also, I think he thinks like this will bridge some sort of plot hole in okay. people's, people's minds you know yeah, yeah. I think so uh, instead of like exploring some sort of idea visually so he makes this bin bag room <laughs> he hangs up all the bin bags in his garage and he's he's posing naked so are we done yeah I think so uh, what would you rate it <laughs> three wow higher than samurai comp did I say two for samurai yeah comp? you said two for samurai comp oh oh you need to rethink your life I do <laughs> I'm going to have to move Samurai Cop to 3 and put this into 2. Wow. You know what? I, I don't blame you because I keep 
changing your life. Keep re- finding new lows. <laughs> yeah, I, that I didn't know existed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the idea of the podcast. <laughs> I'll rate her seven. Fucking hell. <laughs> Are we going by just enjoyment only? I guess so, yeah. Then it's a seven. If it's technical and not ironic enjoyment, two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what are we watching next? Cool. Right. So... You seem to be excited about this. I am excited about this because... Oh my god, I forgot the name of the podcast. (laughs) Because I Hate Your Movie is doing a sequel, y'all. You, for, you forgot our podcast name. <laughs> how day? In my head, I was like, How I Met Your Mother is doing. <laughs> I was like, That's not our name of our podcast. <laughs> okay, wait. Let me think. What did we watch? Oh no, is it Extraction 2? Yeah, it is! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. And my admission is the same as yours. I have not seen this film. <laughs> okay, fine. I mean, there was never a rule or anything. Okay. So, you know. Whatever. Jake the Rake is back. <laughs> What's his name? Jake Rake? Yeah. No, his name is Rake. Rake. Yeah. What's his first name? Who cares? No. <laughs> I hope it's better. <laughs> I tried to enjoy it. Last one was on so fun. I got high hopes. Yeah? No. For me or the podcast or the movie? <laughs> None of that. Uh, I don't know anyone that's seen this film. <laughs> including the director and the <laughs> Chris Hemsworth. Oh, bye. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. I don't owe you any book. No book. That first book made a fortune for you.